Hi there guys, welcome to today's uh, species file. Uh, once again, please subscribe to the channel. It uh, helps us get more and more content out to you guys. Down at the bottom there's a little bell icon. Just click on that, click on all. Then it's gonna let you know all the notifications as they come through as we produce videos. You're never gonna be left out, never gonna have FOMO because no one wants that. Today we're talking about the mighty shad. Now the shad scientific name, Pomatoma saltatrix. Uh, it was changed quite a while back uh, from Salter Tort, Salter Tricks, all about them jumping. Um, it's got a, I think it was, I think it's actually Greek where it comes from, that uh, Salter Tricks comes from the jumping side of things or dancing ladies, something like that to that extent. But anyway, we won't dwell on that. Shad go by quite a few different names. Uh, in terms of the more common, common names, you've got uh, Bluefish, that's mainly in America that they call them that. The Australians call them Taylor, and uh, down in the Cape they call them Elf. Now, the shad is probably one of the most targeted fish along our coast. They are, as you can see, an overall sort of silvery fish, goes to a bluey green on the top. The smaller fish have a lot more silver to them. As they get older and older, they get this darker green hue on the top, like this majestic specimen here. They have a fairly large eye for their size and extremely sharp teeth. They're a bite from a shad bleeds for a very long time. It's actually got a little bit of anticoagulant in its, in its uh, saliva. So it just bleeds and bleeds and bleeds, but the teeth are something you really want to avoid. And it is the reason we use uh, steel wire generally, especially on our bite traces. Domino, why are you barking? Ooh. Sorry. Sorry guys. Anyway, so that's the reason we're gonna be using steel on most of our traces. On our spoons and things like that, we generally don't. Uh, because the shad attacks from the back, the way they eat is they disable their prey before they come around and eat it again. So if a, a fish is swimming along, the shad's gonna go bite the tail off the, the bait. So often when you have live bait, you'll see that their tails get nipped off and you miss the fish because either that you struck and pulled the bait away from it or that he came ate the back and then thought that's enough and carried on swimming. So they dis disable the bait, cut the back off and then come and eat the head. So that's why generally on spoons and lures, unless it's the very, very big shad, you're looking at using, you don't have to actually use wire on it. I just use a split ring and a swivel on the front, gives you a little bit of added uh, bite protection on the front. But that's more than enough for, for most of your shad fishing and you do get more bites if you use less, if you don't use wire. Now, Shad, in terms of what are they eating? Anything that swims, but they, they do have a preference for smaller bait fish. Blacktail, uh, pinkies are one of their absolute favorites. If you need a live bait for a shad, a little pinky is deadly, deadly. Remember, pinkies have to be seven and a half centimeters to be used as live bait. So, same as if you're using shad as live bait, they have to make legal size before you can use them. Now, in terms of where they found, they actually found circum globally, so around the entire world in tropical and uh, temperate waters, except in the eastern and western Pacific, I believe, are the only two places that you don't get them. But we do get them around the entire South African coastline. During summertime, they're going to be mainly found off the Cape region, so down in the, in the southern Cape. And then as it goes later and later into winter, they almost follow the sardine run. Oh, they're kind of just before the sardines come in winter to, uh, to KZN. So it's a, they migrate up all the way to here. Interestingly enough, the original uh, tagging data that was taken many, many years ago when the tagging project had just, just started, actually found shad that had been tagged in Longobarn Lagoon had moved all the way up into KZN, been caught here, released again, and got all the way back down to Longobarn which is phenomenal. Longobarn does actually have its own population of shad that stay in the lagoon itself, but that's a separate story. So with the spawning happening in October through to December, um, October and November are actually closed seasons for the, for the shad. So you're not allowed to target them, not allowed to catch them. If you do, you have to put them back as soon as possible. Um, because that's when they're spawning, that's when they're gonna be at their highest uh, aggregations. So it's gonna be very easy for them to get overfished and things like that. So October, November, no targeting of shad. From the 1st of December, you're allowed to target shad again. Uh, minimum size for these guys, you measure it from the tip of the nose all the way to the tip of the tail. It is not a forked tail, so it's not into this groove here. It is all the way to the extension of the tail. So this lunate kind of tail, you don't have to worry about measuring into the groove or things like that. It's to the tip of the tail. And that has to be 30 centimeters. Remember that. 
you're also only allowed to keep four shad. Now let's go over a few things that some people don't understand always. You're allowed four shad. That means you can only catch four in a day and you're only allowed to be in possession of four. So you can't catch four today, four tomorrow and keep them all in your freezer. Then you're in possession of eight shad. That's illegal. So you're only allowed to have four on you at any, at any one stage. If you've caught four shad and you're kept all four, you cannot catch another one and use it as bait. That's considered keeping five shad. So if you're using it as bait, one, it has to be legal size, and two, you cannot keep more than your quota. So you can't slide six shad out just because you're not gonna keep them. You're, you, you're utilizing that, that uh, uh, fish itself, so you cannot actually do that. You're only allowed four. Now, when it comes to targeting of shad, uh, the, there are a couple different methods of doing it. Spinning is one of them. Using our gold falcon spoon has proved absolutely deadly for these guys. It's probably the most used spoon in KZN uh, for shad, definitely. Um, early hours of the day and later in the evening is your best time, but when the shad are biting, they can go the whole day through. You can catch them on every single cast. Now, other methods are gonna be for, with bait. Now, you either do a ground bait or you do a drift bait. Ground bait would be obviously anchored to the ground, so you have your sinker and then uh, generally a cork on there onto a small piece of wire and your, your hook where you're going to have your bait. That's going to keep it off the bottom, stop you from catching things like rays and things. Your other option, which is my preferred method, is a complete drift bait, either with a bung or without. Without a bung is probably the nicest way to fish for shad. You rig your sardine, you're just flicking it into the likely area and you just keep tension with it and you feel the shad come and eat it. It is a very, very lacquer way to catch them. So guys, you're gonna be looking for shad generally in sheltered bays is probably the best place to look for them. So for example, somewhere like um, Belito at Boulders, you've got a, a bit of a point that sticks out and on the left-hand side, you've got a sheltered bay, uh, Vinkel Sprite, High Rocks. You've got the point that sticks out, you've got a bay on the left-hand side, this, you're seeing a pattern here. You've got Nyoni Rocks, you've got a bit of a rock that sticks out, bay on the left-hand side. Christmas Bay up north, Bay of Sticks up left hand side. Most of these areas, because we get a lot of wind from the southeast, but the, the northeast erodes, you get that bay that forms on the northern side of, of Point. That is generally one of the better places to look for a shad. It's more sheltered water for them, so they like that. It's not too turbulent and mixing around, but they also are predatory fish. So if you can see very far in the water, like if it's very clear, Everything can see you, you can see everything, which means the bait fish that they're trying to hunt are gonna be able to see them from very far away. So they like a bit of a white water, not turbulent upside down mixing like a kingfish does. They want something a little bit more subdued, a little bit more of a, uh, something crashing onto a rock and rolling white water that comes through, almost like a cob, very, very similar. So bays like that, uh, deep water points, they, can, they come in right, right close to the rocks and um, yeah, that's going to be kind of the areas that you're going to be looking for them. Near river mouths are also a good spot. The slightly dirtier water where you get the, the current lines actually helps with the, um, with the shad's hunting. Because the bait fish can't see them, they can then work on seeing, seeing the bait fish a bit better and they rush through in packs and try and get there. They are shoaling species. When they do get to this kind of size, they operate more like a garrick and they, they're a bit more solitary, maybe staying in a small pack of about five or so. The small guys can be in packs of hundreds. In all honesty, the number of shad I've seen caught in groups and things like that, you'd swear they're a million shad, at least. At least in one bay. Guys, the shad, it's a lovely fish to use for bait, it's a lovely fish to eat, and a very nice fish to catch. They are good fighters for their size. They mature at around 25 centimeters, hence the 30 centimeter uh, bracket that you need to catch them, uh, catch them over. And yeah, just a fantastic species. Cheers, guys.